This is a section of the orchard that I, I don't think I've um, said much about before now. Um, this is what we call the Peace Orchard. The name sort of struck me one day and uh, you just said, yes, that's right, it's the Peace Orchard and we've um, uh, kept it at that. Um, without boring with the full history of this section, um, this is uh, essentially being developed as a wild flower meadow uh, with absolutely minimal, preferably zero, inputs of um, you can see that damsel fly there as well, there's a butterfly and bees and all sorts. Um, hopefully zero inputs of um, pesticide, lots of wild flowers and very widely spaced uh, fruit trees and in particular peri pears. Now don't ask me to give you the names of all of these um, uh, wild flowers. Some of them are native to this area, they just sprung up by themselves. Um, and others, I think probably this one as well, whatever it's called, I'm not sure. Um, geez, it was a pincushion plant or something. But anyhow, uh, this is an area, where, I mean, I, I bought in a kilogram or so of um, Cotswold wildflower seed mixture and slung it around here. And uh, we've been um, managing this on a very minimal level. This is a peri pear tree and it's uh, on seedling rootstock, so it's tall, that's my hand, and that's, um, it's made well over a foot of growth this year, made a good two foot last year, just to give you an idea, I'm standing uh, next to that. That's a peri pear uh, variety, Winnell's Longden. Peri pears have even more interesting and unusual names than, uh, uh, than apples. We've got some interesting things here, this is a, a larva, or caterpillar of a thing called the cinnabar moth, uh, of a black and yellow striped moth, and it's the only moth apparently that, re that eats this plant, which is called ragwort. It's a poisonous plant, uh, but it's poisonous to horses, and that is, that's what the ragwort flower is like. Sweetly speaking, we should cut these down, probably will do. Here's some oxide daisies, that's, you can see roughly what the flower may have looked like. Uh, this is the seed, it's gone to seed. Uh, oh, we've got lots of interesting thistles here, stinging nettles, obviously. Um, this is a variety of fennel. Uh, this um, mm, it's an aniseedy smell, very nice with fish. Um, various odds and things, most of which I can't name. And obviously, oh well, look at that. And may I say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ladybirds I can see there. If I can see seven, there's going to be more than seven. I'm not sure what this plant is. It's uh, quite an attractive looking plant. Um, oh, it's a nice smell. Yeah, I'm not sure what this one is. Uh, oh, I wish I had studied botany. Maybe I will study it properly. <laughs> um, this is um, a flower called a uh, white campion. I don't know if you can see um, the seed there. Yeah, look at that, eh? Loads and loads and loads of seed, which I just cast to the wind. Uh, I don't know what this is, but it wasn't, it's not anywhere else in the orchard. Again, these things are seeding themselves. I've scattered these and obviously some will do better than others. And here's uh, the other peri pear tree. This is um, a variety called um, Blakeney Red, a popular um, peri pear. And these are on seedling rootstock. So you can see that's the other one where I've come from. And the idea is that these will grow to all 60 feet eventually. Very wide spread. So I have spread these uh, um, about 35, about 30 feet apart. And we're going to plant some more. Regrettably, um, our plans didn't go well this year. Some of the uh, peri pear rootstocks that I planted out died in the drought. Um, I, I mentioned one of them earlier. I should have tried harder. Okay, you know. You attempt nothing, you'll achieve it for certain. Um, if you attempt anything, you're bound to have some disappointments. And uh, yeah, there's all sorts of interesting um, plants. Uh, some of this is um, uh, left over from the heritage of this area. This is um, uh, a, uh, I think it's a raspberry. It's either a raspberry or a, a, a black currant or some, a, 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 not black currant, a blackberry. So some of the plants you see here are not particularly special. This, for example, is uh, evening primrose, which is a, a wildflower escape. 
Uh, it's a garden escape, not a wildflower at all. And here's some oaks, and you'll always get some oak coming up. Acorns are introduced and they'll just uh, grow away. Um, yeah, but this is the idea. You can sort of see around you uh, lots of wildflowers. It's quite neglected, but very deliberately, wild grass is very deliberately neglected. We've got a number of um, widely spaced uh, trees. Uh, we'll maybe changing these a little bit. Uh, it's going to take maybe 10 years for this project to mature. Um, anyway, in the meantime, I'll finish with this. Uh, this is a flower called a teasel. See that grasshopper down there? I'm one of those people who gives names to his computers. One of my computers is called Grasshopper. Another one's called Quicksilver. A lot of pocket computers are called Quicksilver. Uh, but anyway, this is um, teasel. And um, these are quite attractive plants. And the heads of these, um, you know, they can be dried quite prickly. They can be dried and used in dried flower arrangements. Very attractive. And um, they uh, they used to be used in the textile trade for scraping um, felt or something like that. But anyway, just to give you an idea, we've got this area here about a, about. Uh, so over a quarter of an acre, I think, where we've got very widely spaced uh, trees. The idea is that eventually we'll have, um, we'll scythe all of these weeds down every now and then, weeds, wildflowers. Uh, any that we really don't like, we'll remove with a scythe. And um, we'll encourage those that we like. We might even introduce some new varieties. Uh, so the idea that this will be a wildflower meadow, very rich in um, uh, wildlife. Um, we maybe the uh, the plants just scythed down once a year after they've seeded, and in order to encourage um, uh, biodiversity and a reservoir um, for beneficial uh, insects, which we hope will come and eat our um, uh, pests to some extent. And in any event, this will be a beautiful place, and um, possibly after we have gone and the mainstream orchard here is cut down uh, as being economically inefficient, this may get left. Oh, I should just say one more thing while I'm here. Yeah, there's a deer in the orchard. And uh, so I saw him the other day, a young uh, roe deer with antlers, a young male roe deer. And this is the sort of damage that deer do. There's a chance that this tree might survive. Um, or not, I don't know. As for the deer's chances of survival, well, uh, we'll see. One last plant, this is a vetch. Very attractive little plant with purple flowers.